copy the poster here on the side so we all know what I'm talking about. You know, it troubles me, as I said before, for me to be terminated after serving the city of Bridgeport for 27 years because I complained about these toxic waste piles at the city health department that people were kids were playing on. It's a shame that Dr. Evans had to be warned to take action against me because I had the, the nerve to want to speak out about our kids playing on contaminated soil. And as a result of that, okay, I ended up leading to me being harassed to a point where I had to get a doctor to treat me for the problems that I was going through. And I just wanted to point that out, that shame on the city of Bridgeport and those officials who forced her to take action against me, which we had no problem before that. Number two, I want to give you a copy of the letter, as I gave all of you council members, a copy of the letter indicating that because of, as of 317, I have not returned to work. My position as a city employee was hereby terminated. I can't understand how you can say I was terminated for not returning to work as of 317 when you have a time card which shows very clearly that on March 16, 2006, I did come to work. I was only working 20 hours because I was asked by Dr. Evans to give one of the senior citizen guys a chance to be able to pull in to stay on the job because his funds had ran out at the senior citizen center, which I gave him 15 of my hours to keep him on the payroll. Okay? And it also troubled me that as it was stated that I did not come to work on March 17th, the reason why I didn't come to work on March 17th is because I have given Dr. Evans a doctor note indicating that I would be going for a colon exam, which is on the poster, which I've given every one of you council members documentation pertaining to that. And it shames me to see to this day that even Mr. Estrada, even though he as a Republican was willing to stand up for me, that now I'm being told that I have to give him an affidavit to look into my allegations of me being unjustly terminated, which I will do so. I also want to show on this poster here a note taken from Ada, Dr. Evans' assistant, who was my supervisor at the time, who also made a note in black and white indicating that I was due for a colon exam on the 17th, which I gave her and Dr. Evans a copy of. Also on this note you will see here that Ada said very clearly that I was there for only an hour and a half, which I suppose only had worked three hours, because I was working from Monday through Friday, three hours every day, Monday through Friday, and then in the evening on Wednesdays and Friday, I would work the other two and a half hours. Again, I said before, it's not about the money. It's about my right being violated, and that's what troubles me. So I don't come here begging and pleading for you to hire me because I'm hungry or because I'm lacking dollars to survive, but I'm coming here to defend my rights. And it troubles me as an American public, as someone who's been in the hood for 40-something years speaking on behalf of people who oftentimes cannot speak for themselves. It's a shame that I can go to my own council members and ask them to look into it, and they wouldn't do so. So I want to commend Mr. Estrada for at least trying to get something done about my concern. And I plead with Mr. McCarthy as well as the rest of the council members. It's not about looking out for me. I'm not asking for anybody to do me any kind of justice. But dear go to grace of God could have been you. Dear go to grace of God could have been your mother, your brother, your sister. And as a taxpaying person who paid close to $7,000 a year on my home, it's a shame and a disgrace that I can come before this city council and to have you submit pledge to this American flag that we all are treated equal, and we all will be treated equal up under this flag. It troubles me that after seven and a half years that I've been here, to this day I haven't got any kind of treatment, any kind of response to my complaints. And I'm pleading again as elected officials, those of you who took an oath to be fair and to be truthful about what you took an oath for, to look into these allegations. Yes, Mr. Lestrada, I will give him an affidavit in black and white, asking him to be able to pursue what he started on my behalf. And it's a shame that out of 19 Democrats, it had to be a Republican to do something about my injustice that was happening to me and my family. I was denied my medical benefits. Every one of you have documentation pertaining to everything I'm saying here, showing you that I followed my proper procedures when an unjust termination took place on my behalf. It not only hurted me, it hurted my family. And to have to be able to go through this process of pleading with you and looking at this, and to now have to give him an affidavit when I said publicly he has the right to pursue my matter, on behalf of me, on behalf of my family, I say shame on those of us who look like me, who claim to be so concerned about our people's rights being violated. Thank God for Lincoln. It was Lincoln, I guess, at the day when he talked about freeing the slaves. He was a Republican. Why is that a Republican got to come forward when I put 19 Democrats here to do what Jesus swore on the oath to do? It troubles me that I can't get you to respond to my unjust termination. And I plead with you again, I will give him a letter in black and white signed 
pleading that you all will look into these allegations. And if you find that anything I said could not be backed up, if anything I said is not true, by all means, disregard everything I've said. Please give me that due respect as an American and as a taxpayer. Thank you very kindly for hearing my cry. Thank you. You're welcome. John Marshall Lee. John